Korea's port city of Busan has opened its 27th International Film Festival with curtains going up this past Wednesday for a 10-day run. Movie makers, moviegoers as well as movie critics are gathered at the gala, which as the foreign media say, is a full-scale comeback event following two tough years of pandemic restrictions. So what movie is opening the event and what is closing it? What are the implications of the global acclaim garnered by Korean productions on the Busan Film Fiesta? And what's on the list of films by foreign directors involving Korea? Welcome to Issues and Insiders. Festivities are in full swing over in the southern port city of Busan as it plays host to its regional film gala. For more, I have Professor Kim Shin Dong at Hallam University live on the line. Professor Kim, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, thank you for inviting me to uh, the program. Right. I also have Jason Bechevez joining me virtually. Jason, it's been a while. Welcome back. Well, thank you for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. Right. Professor Kim, we'll start with you. Let's begin with a few words, Professor, on the significance of the event this year. Uh, yes, the pandemic's been around uh, for too long a time. Uh, I hope the Busan Film Festival will serve as the symbolic punctuation uh, mark for the COVID-19. Uh, film festivals around the world have been much suffered over the last two years. Uh, following Busan Festival, I want to see other festivals will return with vigor. You know, uh, right before the pandemic came, uh, in 19, no, no, in the year 2019, there were uh, around 200 film festivals in Korea. Did you know that? Uh, that's a surprising number, even if we consider many of them were tiny events. Right, I see. Now, Jason, while Professor Kim and I are here in capital Seoul, you are there in Busan. Could you tell us a bit about the festive atmosphere, atmosphere that is there in Busan before we actually delve into the films? Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty jovial um, and, uh, you know, it's returned to some sort of no normality. I'm, I'm speaking from a very dimly lit hotel room, so this might look a bit depressing, but actually, no, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's been good, actually. It's been uh, refreshing to be uh, back in Busan on the ground. I was here last year. Uh, and there was a, there was a 9 p.m. curfew. There were no events. Uh, but this year, there've been plenty of events. There've been parties. There's been receptions. There's lots of international guests. I've seen a lot of familiar faces, some new faces, um, and yeah, there's lots of films. I was uh, at a screening yesterday. There was pretty much uh, you know it was full. It was sold out. Uh, and so yeah, this is I think a return to a sense of a normality and uh, that's something that should be embraced of course we're we're now entering a different uh we're entering an ecosystem that has changed somewhat over the last few years with streaming uh certainly uh, leading the way in in the film industry uh, as we're seeing a lot of directors kind of migrating over to to mini series content uh, and cinemas, you know, whilst they're certainly open and certainly people are going to the cinema, but we're not seeing the kind of numbers that we once were, certainly before the pandemic. The Roundup performed very well, selling over 12 million tickets. But, you know, since then, I think there have been a number of uh, disappointments. Um, and so uh, it's, it's interesting to be down here in Busan to, to ascertain, you know, where is the industry right now? Where is it heading? And streamers are... Uh, uh, have a big presence here in Busan, as, as well as the studios. Uh, and so, yeah, it's, it's a very interesting setting. But certainly it seems like we are in a phase of recovery. Right. That's good to know, of course. Professor Kim, the Busan International Film Festival was launched in the year 1996. Could you tell us a bit about the background behind its beginning? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, Korea never had a film festival like this until mid-1990s uh, 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 when Busan started this festival for the first time. It was really the first festival in Korea. We simply had some film award ceremonies, including Daejeon uh, Award or, uh, you know, some other still going on. Um, so, you know, it really opened a, a new pace uh, with Busan. But it's, it was not alone. 
you know, uh, from the overall development of Korean film industries uh, throughout the 1990s, especially toward the end of the 1990s, Korea began seeing a uh, remarkable uh, transformation of film industry from a small scale, like, you know, privately owned, uh, 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 you know, businesses to uh, corporate backed nationwide operations which uh, eventually, you know, turned out to be a significant transformation in the development of film festival. So, uh, and we remember, you know, the rise of the Korean style blockbuster uh, from Shri, and then which was immediately followed by many other mega hits uh, and increased the uh, presence of Korean cinema throughout the world, especially from the East Asian society. Right. Meanwhile, Jason, with regard to this year's event, could you tell us a bit about the opening Iranian film, Sense of Wind, and of course the closing Japanese film, A Man, I believe? Yeah, um, sadly, I wasn't able to make the opening film. So, um, but yeah, it's, it certainly seems very interesting. It's directed by Hada uh, Mohage. Uh, it's his first film, uh, his second film, actually. Um, immortal premiered at the the festival uh, and won the new currents award so there's there is a, a kind of history there and attachment to the Busan Film Festival and so it's really good that it's actually the opening film you know sometimes it's a Korean film I'm always intrigued when it comes to Busan you know what film we're going to open with uh, and they have opened with a number of Korean films over the years but they've also opened with films from all over Asia. So um, I think it's, it's fantastic to have an Iranian film open the festival. Uh, and to close the festival, we've got um, A Man. Uh, it's a Japanese film directed by Ishikawa Kei. Um, he made his, uh, his debut um, in 2016, I think it was, with Traces of Sin. That's an adaptation of, of, of a novel. Um, it follows a divorcee. He returns to a, <coughs> excuse me, a hometown uh, with, with a son and falls in love and yeah, some unexpected things that happen uh, thereafter. Uh, and so, yeah, um, it, I'm, I'm curious to see the closing film as well. Um, but uh, yeah, sadly, <laughs> I'll be going back to Seoul before the end of the festival. So I'm not sure I'll be able to get to see it down, down here. Uh, but uh, yeah, two, two good films to open and close. Right, uh, Busan. right indeed. Uh, Professor Kim, I was wondering, do you believe the global acclaim that Korean productions have uh, garnered in recent <coughs> years has perhaps served to raise the status of the Busan International Film Festival? Oh, I do. Uh, can you imagine uh, any uh, high-profile film festival which uh, doesn't really have any noticeable uh, national cinema? Uh, as a matter of fact, I believe film festivals are one of the three important legs of uh, film scene uh, that support the entire film scene. Uh, first, quality production. Second, size, sizable market. And the third is the international festival. I think Korea has developed like both uh, quality production and uh, size of the market remarkably to up, you know, to the uh, global level and. Uh, you know, on, on the top board uh, in the international market. But in terms of the film festivals, you know, international festivals, Korea is still uh, has a kind of long way to go. And then that means that we have a room to develop the film festival, uh, you know, uh, in, a, in, a, in a more like global event, uh, not necessarily a decorative uh, subordinate event to the film industry. But uh, festivals do have its own, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, right to become an independent uh, cultural event. Right. And staying with that, Jason, I understand Pusan's lineup this particular year includes a host of beyond the border productions by foreign filmmakers involving Korea. Do you care to elaborate? Yeah, so we've got uh, Return to Seoul uh, by Cambodian uh, French director David Cho, it premiered. Uh, at the uh, Cannes Film Festival earlier this year, and uh, by all accounts, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. So uh, I'll be very curious to see that film. We've also got Ajumar as well, which is premiering here in the, the New Currents. This is Busan's kind of signature section. Uh, and this is by Singaporean director He Shiming. And we also have Rice Boy by Korean-Canadian director uh, Anthony Shim. Uh, and I think if you look earlier on in the year as well, I mean, uh, certainly Broker, 
uh, which is directed by Hirokazu, Hirokazu Kureda, uh, you know, Japanese filmmaker and featuring a Korean cast set in Korea. Uh, and, you know, that premiered at the Cannes Film Festival competition, along with actually uh, Pak chang decision to leave, which starred Chinese actress Shang uh, Wei. So, um, there is, I think, a trend um, what we're seeing, you know, internationalization uh, of Korean films. Um, and that's to be expected, I think. Uh, we've certainly seen co-productions over the years. This is, these aren't the first in Snapsul international co-productions, of course. Uh, but I think we will see an acceleration of this process as uh, Korean cinema uh, reaches all corners of the globe. You know, the success of, uh, of Parasite, of course, and, and, and also other content such as Squid Game. And uh, there is a big spotlight on Korea and the film industry. And so it makes sense uh, to, to have these these co-productions and certainly the studios as well they've long been kind of invested in other areas of uh, of the world not least uh, asia you know southeast asia cj for example uh, have been producing films in, in in places like uh you know indonesia vietnam and, and other territories as well uh, and so i, I think we're going to see more of this over the coming uh, months and years ahead. Right, hopefully. Professor Kim, as you mentioned earlier, this particular Busan fiesta comes amid COVID-19. And that being said, what can you share with us about the impact of the pandemic on Asia's film industry? Korea has thrived to a certain extent, of course. What has been the impact on other film industries across the region? Why well, I, uh, I must say during the pandemic, I don't really think there were any country that uh, sort of enjoyed good theater, uh, theatrical business. Uh, most of them suffered, uh, including Korea. But and the pandemic created an opportunity for the global streaming platforms, such as uh, Netflix, as we all know. Uh, I'm not saying global OTTs like Netflix uh, succeeded due to the pandemic. Uh, but the situation was obviously uh, positive for their uh, business operations. Uh, the cons competition between movie theaters uh, and the streaming services uh, like global OTTs will, I guess, uh, continue and maybe intensify. But it's uh, way too early to make any judgment on the future of the uh, film theaters or film festivals uh, in these circumstances. But uh, I do believe that the film theaters and then festivals do need to find a sort of new business models, you know. Uh, when the challenges are really uh, becoming more realistic on the part of the new platforms. So, uh, and then I do think there are uh, rooms to develop. Right, of course. Jason, back in Busan, discovering new talent is one of the major tasks of this film festival. Now, that being said, what works do you care to highlight? Yeah, uh, certainly Busan is a place when it comes to, fa you know, discoveries. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, the the new current section this is the, the the signature program at the Busan Film Festival. This is where you you tend to get some of the big discoveries. Uh, House of Hummingbird is, is is a very good example by directed by Kimbura that just went to you know, dozens of film festivals throughout the world and also. Uh, won a number of awards as well. And so this year, uh, you know, that's the place I will be certainly looking at. Uh, Wild Rumor, hail, excuse me, Hell to Hell as well. Uh, they're both screening in New Currents, uh, along with Ajima that I just mentioned. Um, and then there's the vision section um, that um, also tends to have a lot of discoveries. Uh, Han Gong Ju. Uh, is, is an example of that, I think, in, in the early 2010s. Um, and so I'll be looking at what films will ultimately end up traveling to, to festivals overseas. I have seen a few of them, but unfortunately I'm under embargo, so I can't, <laughs> and they haven't screened yet at the festivals, so I don't want to get into trouble. Um, um, but suffice, suffice to say, you know, there's going to be plenty there that I think is going to uh, interest uh, festival programmers. Um, I was able to see uh, Next Sohi, directed by July uh, Jung, that actually screened in Busan yesterday and it premiered at the Cannes Film Festival and it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I was really blown away by it. So um, I saw that yesterday morning, it was like my kind of first theatrical experience in Busan of this year and it did not disappoint. Uh, this is a director who 
who helmed A Gill at My Door that was produced by Yi Chang Dong uh, a few years ago. So um, there's that I, I, I highly recommend. Uh, but the vision titles, are, uh, most of them screening over the weekend. So right. um, uh, you know, over the coming days, we're going to have a good idea as to which films are, are generating a lot of buzz. You, you tend to, by, by Saturday or Sunday, there'll be one or two films that everyone seems to be talking about. And, right. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll find Most out. likely, right? All right, Jason, I'll take your word for every bit of that because you're there in Pusan. Thank you so much for your time and your thoughts. And Professor Kim, thank you very much for your insights today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us.